Deep Fake Democracy, When Pixels and Politics Collide. Now, let's say big tech can figure out a way to block this. California says the social platforms can do it. Push it off to them. After all, they're the techies. They do stuff we don't understand. And it's AI. After all, it's magic. Well, social media platforms are gaining what? Godlike powers of discernment? What is this, black mirror or real life? Each platform would likely create more problems for its users than solving it. Talk about false positives. Facebook, now with 100% accurate BS detection or your democracy back, guaranteed. And we saw this in the Mark Zuckerberg letter that he just sent to Jim Jordan, congressman, addressing the Hunter Biden Burisma story that he was forced to shut down in 2020. They received a warning, Meta did, from the FBI, and this was called potential Russian disinformation, even though it was an article in the New York Post. So they took the article down temporarily, saying it was fact-checked, and it turned out the report was not Russian disinformation, and Meta later acknowledged it should not have suppressed the article. In fact, some say Zuckerberg wrote this article in case Trump gets elected to sort of cover his back. But it's, this is an example of how pressure from political institutions can influence these powerful platforms and this stopped an important article from being released prior to the election. So in a way, it was its own disinformation and election interference. This is the problem with government regulation of deep fake political content. We don't have the tools and censorship is never a game of really protecting us. It's always a game of power. So how do you expect nuance, humor or parody, judgment by AI that doesn't do nuance well? I mean, how do they know? And it even helps create what the Brookings Institute calls the liar's dividend. Deny a video you don't like and attack the ones you do. Either way you win.